We say good morning to Craig Sager, TNT, TBS, and on the cover, Sports Illustrated. Who would have thought, Segs, the cover, Sports Illustrated? Congratulations. Yeah, I still don't believe it. Uh, really, to be honest with you, thought it was like an April Fool's joke. <laughs> um, and it, it, even my kids, you know, like, what? Come on. <laughs> Only athletes and swimsuit models are on the cover. What are you doing there? <laughs> I said, I don't know. But it was a uh, very flattering. It was a hell of an article by Lee Jenkins. Um, I knew Sports Illustrated was following me around last weekend during that Detroit Cleveland series, and they could do an article, but nobody said anything about a cover. I thought maybe, you know, I'd be hooked up with you, and you're going to do a thing on just my type or something. But uh, <laughs> I was a little, little shocked. Uh, obviously, it was very complimentary and flattering. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't think it's really sunk in yet. What did you learn about yourself? Because when Lee Jenkins, you know, dives in, he goes deep. And I don't know, did you learn anything that maybe surprised you? Well, he went through a lot of um, background. And uh, the article was mostly, you know, recently, which I thought was very good. And I just kept telling him, you know, he kept asking me questions about, you know, the tough times. And I said, I don't want to talk about those. I said, I don't want to ruin your article. I said, but I don't dwell on those. I don't talk about it. You know, the days in the chemo and the days in the hospital. I said, I like I could talk about the positive. I said, I don't even want to be around people that bring up that stuff. So I think uh, we had, you know, a dialogue back and forth. And, you know, he wanted to know how I've changed or what's different. I said, really? I don't think I, I, don't think I have. Uh, it's just that, you know, it's a little overwhelming. But obviously, I understand that it's, it's not that I'm important. It's what I'm fighting is important. I understand that, you know, when I go to places and arenas and, you know, people want to take the picture, you know, talk to me and they come up and, you know, they say I'm an inspiration or a train for me and all. I understand it's not just me and the fact that I'm on TNT, but it's a bigger cause. Uh, everybody's been affected, it seems like, some way or another by cancer. And they want to see somebody fight this stuff. Um, it's the evil. And, uh, as long as I stand up and I keep fighting it and I don't give in and, you know, I go to the hospital the night before a game and I get all my blood work so I can get to the game and do it, uh, they find an inspiration in that. So it's it's far beyond me. It's a, it's a cause I'm fighting for and I just happen to be a symbol of it. And, uh, you know, they did a hell of an article and, uh, like I said, it still really hasn't sunk in. I, you know, come on, cover the sports illustrator, you got to be kidding. How's your health now? Oh, pretty good, except I got a little bloody nose here because my platelets were so low and I won't stop bleeding. So I'm glad this is a phone interview and not TV. <laughs> but didn't you have that before when, when Real Sports did the interview? Was your nose... Yeah. yeah. You, you had a bloody nose then? Yeah. Yeah, what happens is your, when your platelets get low, um, your blood doesn't coagulate and stop. So any type of any cut, you can bleed to death. And uh, somehow I got this in my nose. Um so I'm sitting here with a little cotton ball, but look like a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are. I guess that's what I'm doing. <laughs> you are a fighter. Uh, we're talking to Craig Sager, TNT and TBS. How much does working help with this whole process? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe how much it helps. You know, you know how much fun we used to have those days at CNN. You know, it wasn't work. It was, you know, it's our livelihood. That's what we do. And, uh, just the fact, you know, that I get to, you know, go to work and do things. I mean, if I had to just lay around and, you know, feel sorry for myself because I had a bloody nose because my platelets were low, I mean, it would drive me nuts. It would drive Stacy nuts, and it certainly would not be any inspiration or anything I'd be fighting for. Um, I just, you know, finished the Detroit Cleveland series, which is a sweep. So I've been here in the office. I went to the Boston Atlanta game for fun last night. And then I was waiting for my assignment, and I just got the word this morning I'm going to be on the OKC San Antonio series, which is perfect because my hospital and my doctors are all in Houston. So, mm. I mean, I can literally drive from San Antonio over there because I have to go in twice a week to get blood. So I think that's perfect because I, I won't have to miss a game, and I can still do my job. So it works out great. Um, it certainly is therapeutic, um, and it certainly gets me going. And, you know, I love it. You know, without it, it'd be a very, very, very massive void in my life. And, you know, I'd be 
it'd be really difficult. The process of giving blood, explain that. Um, well, I go in and they take my blood, and then they have to cross-match it, which is uh, just to make sure that when I have a transfusion that it's the exact match. So that takes about two hours. And then, uh, when I came in Monday, I knew I was running low from that series, so they had to give me two bags of platelets, and that takes about an hour apiece. And then I had to have two blood transfusions, and they're anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours apiece. And uh, it's not one of those things where you instantly feel great, but uh, it, you definitely feel like you got a little more strength, a little more tough in your step. And, uh, you know, you can kind of feel down when you can kind of feel when you're running low. Um, you know, you got your car, you're driving it, and the gas tank says, you know, can we help you find a gas station? Uh, you're just still driving the car, but you're not going <laughs> it so fast that you're kind of worried about you know, running out. So. It's a it's a physical, you know, thing you need. Uh, it keeps me going. It keeps me alive. So it's uh, just a minor inconvenience that uh, I have to put up with a couple times a week. I've known you a long time, and and when people say Craig Sager, oh, he's the guy who wears the outfits. And then I started to wonder, do the outfits actually overshadow your abilities? Like you're, I mean, you're a determined, fearless sideline reporter. And it feels like people notice the outfits more than what you're really doing as a job. Did do you ever process that and wonder if it's sort of overtaken what you do and your talents? Yes, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that from my father all the time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, but I mean it as a compliment, say, though, Segs. Hey, no, I I know what you're saying, but no, you used to say it all the time. I wait just talk about your outfits. They don't know you went to Northwestern. They don't know anything about the deal with the, you know. Degrees. All you do is, you know, yeah, count that down. And I ask some people to cover that, and I go, I don't feel comfortable. I, I just don't feel comfortable. And he used to get mad at me. So, yeah, some people have said that to me. Um, but like you said, if you know me, that's I just like to have fun. I like to be lively, you know. If we're going down the Chattahoochee River, <laughs> I'm not going to be wearing a great T-shirt and black sweatpants. I'm going to have on some, you know, loudmouth from trunks or something lively. We had fun so on those just, uh, Chattahoochee River trips. Yeah, we did. But a keg. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to have a keg on a raft, but we did, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, and and, and I don't uh, think there was anything left in the keg when we were done with the Chattahoochee River. And no, and I don't think we ought to do it today. I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's more pollution and pollutants in that river now than ever. We didn't care back then, though, Sags. I, I did tell the no. story uh, yesterday with Paulie. Paulie was with me. Remember when we were outside the Clevelander and, and we were arguing about the Heisman Trophy voting and it and it got re- uh-huh. really heated? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Paul, yeah, Paulie was there, my producer, and, <laughs> and I'm and I'm thinking, like, who who else is going to go toe-to-toe to talk about Heisman voting? Because I think it was Adrian Peterson at the time, and I'm saying – He's the best player in college football, and he won't be considered for the Heisman. So we had a couple of beers in us, and here we are <laughs> right at the corner on at the South Beach in the Clevelander outside. I'm going, oh, my God. Paulie goes, I thought it was go time with you and Sager. And I go, I, I did too. <laughs> and we're arguing over the damn Heisman trophy voting. Where are yeah, you? Yeah. I think you said something like, you didn't want to vote because it was a sham and all that stuff. Yes. I got a mad at you. Yes, yes. <laughs> and now I'm voting. And now I do include freshmen <laughs> and sophomores in here. And we've had them win the Heisman seg. So I was right, I think, is, is what, I, what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if we fought, though, on the corner of South Beach that night? Uh, it's probably been like one of those fights in the basketball court. It wouldn't last long. Oh, you think it, you you would take me and be over quickly? <laughs> no, I think better heads would prevail. Oh, they would. Oh, okay. Well, that's why I had Paulie there to be able to separate us just in case. Paulie would have probably let it <laughs> let us go. Like I'm not going to break it up. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> hey, well, congrats on the story. It's wonderful, and uh, you know, I, I guess I'll see you in Rio. You're gonna you're gonna cover basketball at the uh, Olympic Games. Yeah. Yeah, it should be fun. I guess it's, uh, I told him, you know, we're worried about the, uh, obviously, chemo I have to get every month and all, but they've, 
they've arranged it. They, they've already talked to MD Anderson in the hospital, and they said they got the best care for the athletes, and I'll be able to have access to the same care they have. So awesome. I'm not weird at all. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, keep uh, keep doing the great job stirring it up there, and uh, I'll see you in a couple of months. You got it. Thank Thanks, you, Sags. Easy. All right. That's uh, Craig Sager.